In this episode, we're gonna cover regression and show you how to speed it up by more than 20 times. Hey everyone, Tino here, AKA The Dirty Quantile, and welcome to my channel. So what we're gonna to cover today is how to speed up regression. So the, this came about because one of my friends actually was uh, looking to tackle thousands and thousands of regressions and he found some of the inbuilt Python packages quite slow. So I thought about it and I thought, well, how, how could we actually tackle this issue, right? So what I actually did is uh, when I actually built my own and this is what we're actually gonna go and do today. So first things first, if this is the first time on your channel, I usually cover quant finance, statistics, maths, and anything fun like that. So remember to like, subscribe, you know the deal. All right, so what we're gonna do is open up Jupyter Labs so we can have a quick play with some data. All right, here we are in this Jupyter Lab session. I'm just gonna zoom in just to make everyone's eyes a little bit easier. I'm just gonna enhance. All right, so let's start at the top. So I'm just gonna import a few packages and uh, then we'll sort of go through them step by step and essentially, what am I doing? We're gonna start off by just generating some random data. And the reason why I use random data rather than using a, a real data set is because I've got control over Know what that data set is. I can essentially pick my parameters and essentially try and recover them through some of my models. It's actually a really good way to test does your model have any sort of bias inbuilt or anything else like that. So in this case, I'm going to use NumPy, which I've imported at the top, uh, import NumPy as NP. And by setting the seed to zero, so what is the seed? The seed lets you reproduce this data again and again. So if you set it to a specific number, you can get uh, someone else to essentially um, get that random set of numbers again, right? Rather than being you know, really random, it's essentially like a pre-canned set of random numbers. Cool. So here I'm gonna set the random seed to zero, and then I'm gonna set my X variable. And this is just gonna be a random, 100 random numbers. So here I'm gonna use npRandom.rand, uh, 100 or so the size of the, um, of the vector in this case and the, the space is a zero one so essentially you're going to create a random number between zero and one cool so it's just going to create a hundred of those and place them in my variable x um, after that we're going to take um, the variable x and actually construct the y so in this case i've selected two as my intercept uh, my slope is going to be three essentially i've got control over that and then i'm just going to multiply by x and then add some noise again so add another 100 data points to the uh, random number. Fantastic, so now I've got an X and I've got a Y. I'm just gonna run that and place them into a nice data frame so it just makes my life a little bit easier to try and manipulate this. See what this looks like. This looks like that, pretty straightforward. Got an index going from zero to essentially 100 or 99 in this case. And we have just a column with X and a column with Y. Straight, straightforward. First things first, every time you need to plot your data just to check have I done something stupid um, which is, does happen very often so let's actually just go and use uh, this plotly scatter function beautiful cool so it looks exactly as I imagined it so you're looking here and you think well I did set my interceptor to why um, why is it sort of sitting around sort of a two and a half level the reason is that this a random number generator has a you know uh, an average value of 0 0.5 you think you're going to get a random 100 random numbers between 0 and 1 if the average is going to be 0 0.5 essentially i'm adding this error term to my intercept and then hence i come up with two and a half as my uh, as my intercept term right my true intercept term in terms of uh, the slope yeah, it looks right so we've gone from 0 to 1 on the x-axis and our, our y has gone from about two and a half to five and a half that's our three in the slope. Essentially for every one X that we step, how far up in the Y do we go? So data looks right. Important step, easy to sort of get it out the way. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is build a little function to help us generate this random samples, but have some variables so I can actually pick how big do I want that sample size, uh, what, my, what my intercept should be and what my slope should be. So I'm just gonna put into this little function called generate XY. It's gonna give you just input the sample size, intercept and slope, and it's exactly the same as I do above, right? And it just returns XY. So it gives you back the XY, 
just going to run that so I can use it again and again. So one of the most popular packages out there, I would say, is probably the stats model. Um, the reason will become very apparent in just a second. So I'm just going to import that uh, to, to run our first regression and see essentially what do I get out. I'm going to use my generate XY function and I'm gonna have a sample size of 10,000 just to make it a little bit big, a little bit more challenging for, for the system. Uh, same intercept two and a slope of three. With stats model, you need to take the X and then add a constant, right? So the data actually looks like this. It creates an array with a one and a um, the actual value. A bit inconvenient, it's just the way it is, right? If you actually wanna run it without a constant, you can essentially do it without it, but we do want a constant. And that's pretty much all we need. We just do uh, SM, which is a stats model, which I imported above, OLS, ordinary least squares, give it the Y, give it the X, say, hey, dot fit, open close the brackets, so it actually runs it, and then saves it to model. That's it, we run it. It stores the parameters in this uh, dot params um, little object here and i can see oh yeah 2.49 very close to that two and a half i expected and 3.00 so very close to the slope of three nice thing about stats model is this if i do dot summary it gives me this lovely little table right which has quite a lot of information so i'm not going to go through um what each of these uh, things does i think it's probably worth covering in a separate video because there's a lot of information here which is really useful if you want to go uh, into a little bit more detail in terms of what is my data doing um is there any, any sort of bias any issues with it right but just off the bat we can see look the coefficient of the constant again same as above 2.49 my slope value of three great something else you know, a few of these that you might be familiar with one is the r squared value um, you know, pretty common, but then it does a whole bunch of other uh, things. You know, it does an F test, it does a log likelihood, AIC, BIC, it does essentially T tests uh, on uh, on these coefficients and a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, good old Jacques Berra, um, you know, test for normality, Durbin Watson, it does a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, is this useful? Well, it's up to you, right? Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. And that's really the compromise that you have. This will just run this whole battery of tests on the data it's uh, it's going to be pretty obvious you know what the compromise is when you when you have to do all of these tests on the data so i'm just going to run this little time it function so what this does it runs my ols uh, from stats model time and time and time again and uh, then it tells me okay well on average how long did it take me to run so this is saying it took an average of 1.48 milliseconds, right? So, you know, a thousand milliseconds in a second. So pretty quick, essentially instant, quicker than you can blink. You know, you know one and a half milliseconds is fast. If I were to run this on a single, uh, single data set, even with 10,000, uh, sample size of 10,000, it's essentially instant right one and a half milliseconds completely completely instant there's no real advantage in terms of speeding this up right the reason why i might want to speed this up is if i am doing this in a back test if i am doing this in an environment where i need to do this thousands hundreds of thousands of times i want i want to speed this up as much as possible and squeeze out every little bit of performance that i can so Let's have a little uh, chunk of code here. What I've done is I've increased the sample size from 10 all the way to 100,000. And the reason why I've done this is to see, does this function scale linearly? Essentially, as I increase that sample size, does the time taken to compute it you know, go up in essentially twice the number of, uh, of samples? Does it take twice as long? Or is there some sort of bias where that sort of time becomes exponential and take longer and longer and longer to run? Right, so I'm just gonna run this we wait oh, here we go how stats model scales up so look the line complete straight line if it were to be um, you know have a sort of arch going up in terms of you know getting time taken gets longer and longer that's when you know the the function's got an issue but essentially this you can scale it from uh, sample size of 10 all the way to 100,000 and essentially just scales up linearly nice and easy cool second um, Second package that's really quite popular is scikit-learn, right? So in, uh, in scikit, um, we can use uh, this linear regression, a uh, little function here, pretty straightforward. Uh, again, all I need to do is just say, okay, you know, linear regression, save it to uh, an object called regression model and just fit 
Where's the X? What is the Y? I have to reshape it. And once I've run that, it uh, stores the values into intercept and coefficient, and the values are exactly as I expect. You're right. Again, 2.49 and 3. There was never going to be a question of the, of, of the accuracy of these. This is very clean data. I, you know, it's just random data. We, we know exactly what the slope is, we know what the intercept is. This should be very easy to recover these parameters. This is not what it's about. It's the time that it takes to compute this. So, regression model even got the ability to extract a few other things like score, that's like the R squared that we saw before. And this is what we were interested in, right? How long does it take? So, 3.38 uh, you know, microseconds. That's actually quite a bit quicker than stats model. So, that took, you know, essentially 1,400 and. 1,400, you know, 1,500, uh, you know, microseconds. So this is taking 338. So it's really quite a bit quicker, essentially about sort of five times quicker, which is, you know, it's already quite a big speed up. And you can already see it's a compromise between how many tests do, the, do we do on the data, how much information do we do we really need compared to, you know, we just want to get to these two values. Well, let's try and get it as bare bones as possible. And this is already a nice five times speed up, which is, you know, really quite welcome. Beautiful. So look, funny enough, a little bit of the kink down here, um, but pretty much just a straight line. So you know, it's a scikit learn it scales up nicely. It's a very well written package. Right? Can we do better? Let's have a look. So I always think let's go back to basics. Uh, you know, having a back to basics implementation. We're just going to take the uh, formula for sort of entropy for beta for for regression uh, and implement it. Look. I think there's a few advantages in doing this. One is it you get to really understand how the uh, the model actually works. Um, you know, secondly, you can include as much or as little as you want in terms of you know tests. So in this case, look, I only want to see the beta, I only want to see the alpha, the slope, and the intercept. And that's all I need. You know, I don't need to do a t test. I don't need to do uh, an R squared. So all of that essentially is wasting time. So I want to get it as bare bones as possible and as quick as possible. All right, so all I'm going to do is convert the above to code. So pretty straightforward. All I need to do essentially is the sum of the uh, deviations from the uh, mean. So X is essentially our single value. This X bar, or X hat, uh, sorry, X bar is the mean. So all I'm doing essentially, what is the deviation from the mean multiplied by the same thing, you know, the values of the Y against the deviation of the mean of Y. All of that summed divided by the deviation of the mean squared and against all of that sum. So this essentially is converting the above to code. I've got my N, which is the um, number of observations. I've got my X you know, average for X, average for Y, pretty straightforward. And then we've got this uh, you know, sum of XY, sum of X's, just do one divided by the other and I get my beta. So, you know, I've got to that point. I can, if I just needed the betas, I could just skip this step. I don't need the alphas, but let's just do it for the sake of this. So I just rearrange the formula and I come up with my, my alphas and I just return uh, alpha and beta. So I'm just call, calling this turbo linear regression. Um, could be like fun function name. So I'm just going to generate some, uh, some data again, uh, run that. Uh, and then, you know, just essentially see, look, you know, our values are there and I'm going to use this time it function to see how quick can we actually run this 56 uh, microseconds so that is again quite a big speed up compared to the one above there's no secret i'm sure if scikit learn or a stats model were to just to do the alpha and the betas they'll be just as fast right and um, there's no magic here uh, the magic is but that's all i want to get let's just strip everything out and just get to those values whether you have a good uh, good regression, that's beyond the scope of this, right? All you wanted to achieve was to do millions and millions of, uh, of regressions of just calculating the betas. Um, and you can do this extremely quickly, you know? Uh, 56 microseconds is not very much time at all. Again, you wouldn't notice the difference between 56 microseconds and you know, one and a half milliseconds. They're at all intents and purposes are the same. Multiply, apply this up. Uh, hundreds of or oh, millions of times, you'll start to notice a difference. Tiny little bit of a kink down here, um, but nah, I look to an intents and purposes, a, a straight line, beautiful. Comparing the last of it, let's just put it all into a nice little chart. This is essentially comparing the times. I think we're just going to standardize it. 
by uh, a ratio compared to that simple you know, turbo regression that obviously takes only one times itself. Scikit-learn takes six times uh, as much time and stats model takes 26 times as much time. I've seen that go up to you know 40 times uh, uh, slower and um, that's really just depends on the data or how your CPU is feeling on that day. But that's uh, that's sort of pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, it's uh, just a quick understanding of look um, you can achieve a lot more by sort of coding things up yourself obviously you know given time constraints because there's a lot of other bits and pieces happening in these packages. Uh, I think you understand the model a lot better and uh, you know if you if you do need a high high performance model uh, you know something that runs really quickly you can achieve it all right cheers catch you on the next one bye